<laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my Halloween Jolly series. Today we are going to be making this DIY hot cocoa bar with lots of finds from Dollar Tree. And we're also adding some unique holiday treats to go along with it. There's hot cocoa cone, snowman Oreo pops, Mickey gingerbread cookies, and marshmallow hot cocoa mugs. These will be such a hit at your hot cocoa theme vendor events or your cozy at home bar. So have yourself a cup of cheer and warm up at the hot cocoa bar. Don't forget the whipped cream and be sure to keep on watching. we head over to Dollar Tree, I wanted to show you how I put together this striped awning that reminds me of a colorful candy cane. It wasn't from Dollar Tree, but I found it for under $6 from Oriental Trading. It's made out of cardstock and comes with simple instructions for assembly. Once you have the awning, I cut these half inch diameter PVC pipes from Home Depot and spray painted them with a glittery gold spray paint and connected the pipes with a 90 degree elbow and mail adapter for the cutest awning ever. Now let's see what we find on this lovely day. There were a large selection of candy and goodies and the perfect way to store them all is to make your way to the craft aisle and pick up several of their wooden crates and chalkboard tags. I ended up stocking up on seven of the crates and to transform them into some jolly holiday decor, I painted the crates with a bright red paint and hot glued them together to look something like this. For a decorative touch, I also added checked ribbon and glittery peppermint stickers. The fun part is customizing your cocoa bar by writing the names of the toppings and snacks you were serving inside of the crate. I wrote on the chalkboard tags with this chalk pen and attached them onto the crates with this mounting tape. And yes, all these items can be found in the craft aisle of Dollar Tree. Now to fill up our crates, we're back at the candy aisle and I grabbed the Christmas marshmallows, the popular peppermint stirring spoons, and gingerbread Oreos. I know they're not candy, but I couldn't leave them out. And literally all things peppermint. There was peppermint bark, peppermint sticks, and candy canes. Also, the chocolate spoons were there too, but we're making them today as one of the DIY treats which I'm putting into the crates as well as all the other items. These are such great must-haves to snack on for your holiday collection. My shopping buddy reminded me we're forgetting something and he led me to the food aisle where I spotted boxes of Swiss Miss and of course can't forget about the mugs. They had the polar bear and Santa but the snowman that everyone has been hunting down this season was nowhere to be found. I did end up having luck at a different location. He was hiding in the back of the store so check all of the ones in your area or you can order them in bulk off the website. The last items to dress up the bar are these clear glass jars and shakers with a silver platter in the glassware section. You have to check out their ornaments too. There is a whole wall to choose from. The gold glitter belt ornaments really stood out to me and are perfect for that silver and gold holiday look paired with the silver platter. And if you want to leave some secret Santa gifts for your friends, there's cute cards and stickers by the stationery section. The Dollar Store had so many fabulous finds, and Mrs. Claus is helping us set up the rest of the bar. She put assorted candy canes, caramel bits, snow caps, and marshmallows inside of the glass jars. I forgot to show you guys this tin in the store that I used for my peppermint bark. And 
my son was from Michael's Craft Store, but if you want to make your own, there were gold frames at Dollar Tree that you can decorate, and be sure to include your favorite syrups and some whipped cream to enjoy your spectacular hot cocoa. Here is our finish bar. It's such a cozy place to warm up, even with all the snowflakes, and all we're missing are the holiday treats. These hot cocoa cones are so fun and easy to enjoy for a warm cup of cocoa in a bag and you also have your own chocolate stirring spoon. To create these colors, I have chocolate melt and red, milk chocolate and white, but the red wasn't Christmassy enough for me. So I mixed in some Red Chef Master candy coloring to buff it up. And to make everything so much easier, I'm filling the chocolate into a silicone spoon mold with a piping bag. I also tried doing this with a spoon, and let's just say putting a spoon into another spoon didn't work too well. I guess they don't like each other because it got messy. So the piping bag method wins. Just snip a tiny corner off the end without making it too big so the chocolate doesn't gush everywhere. And also, you don't want your chocolate to go above 90 degrees for molding or they will end up with wet spots later on from the chocolate being too hot. Now I'm popping this in the fridge for 15 minutes to completely set the chocolate and it is time to remove them from the mold. The silicone is very stretchy and peels right out. Of course, I showed the pre-made milk chocolate stirring spoons from Dollar Tree. But come on, look at these colors. You just have to make your own. We're going to customize the colorful combinations even more with festive drizzles and sprinkles. I have assorted jimmies in gold, red, and green that I mix together. And my favorite way to drizzle is with a plastic squeeze bottle. The key is to do a tight drizzle as close together as you can. That way your sprinkles have more to stick onto while the chocolate is still wet. And another classic combo is a white spoon with a red drizzle and a sprinkle of crushed peppermint. To serve our delicious spoons with a hot cocoa bar, grab your cocoa mix, mini marshmallows, and some clear plastic decorating bags. This seems unusual, but the way that worked best for me is to place your decorating bag in a cup and fold it over the top to open it up just like you would load a decorating bag with icing and shake down your cocoa mix before cutting it open, then pour it into a small paper cup. If you just pour the packet inside, it clings to random areas inside the bag, and the cocoa is very stubborn to remove, but this trick allows for a much cleaner presentation. Once all the cocoa is in the bag, I push down all the way to the end, and instead of dropping in the marshmallows, make sure to add in your spoon first, to do this, I crushed the cocoa to separate it with my fingers without breaking the handle of the spoon and shimmy it in there. Finish off with as many mini marshmallows as you want. Some like a little and some like a lot in their hot cocoa. Last, I'm twist twist twisting the bag closed with a silver twisty tie and these cones are a must have item at your hot cocoa bar. Another cute idea is to stick on a tag or sticker like you would for a hot cocoa bomb with instructions to add a cup of milk or water to a mug and stir to enjoy. For an extra touch, feel free to tie a bow with your favorite ribbon on top of the twisty tie or just leave it plain and simple. Another treat with extra holiday cheer on these snowman Oreo Pops. Just be careful not to melt the snowman with your warm hot cocoa. I do call these Oreo Pops, but we are using Oreos and Milo wafers to achieve the snowman shape. And what you are going to do is twist the Oreo and line up the side that has the cream with a Nilla wafer to leave enough room on the stick and press down into the cream to hold in place. 
Then separate another Oreo to remove all the cream from that one by scraping it off and rolling it into a ball. Since the no wafer has no cream, I'm adding my own layer on top and attaching it the same way as we did directly down the middle of the Oreo. To complete building our snowman, apply some spoonfuls of white chocolate melts in the center of the Oreo and Nilla wafer. It is best if the chocolate is a slightly thicker consistency instead of too loose to act as a glue and press another cookie on top to sandwich it close. When doing this, the cream gets sticky, so my suggestions are to roll it up like a ball of snow and use a light pressure, not too hard or it will stick to your fingers instead of the vanilla wafer. To get creative with your flavors, you can even use different flavored Oreos like golden Oreos or the gingerbread ones I found at the Dollar Tree. Next, our snowmen are all ready to dip. My tips and tricks are to dip straight into a mug and to thin out the chocolate with your choice of oil. Paramount crystals are easy thins for a smooth result and the temperature should be no higher than 86 degrees to avoid elephant skin. To check the temperature, I recommend an infrared thermometer. Dipping these pops uses a lot of chocolate, so if it doesn't reach the stick, just rock it around like you're rocking around the Christmas tree and shake off the excess. It's about to start snowing in here with this sparkly white sanding sugar. This is the coarse kind and my go-to dab and hold edible adhesive. I'm brushing exactly where I want to add some sparkle, which is everywhere, and the technique is to spread a generous amount around without leaving the layer too thick or the sugar gets lumpy and we don't want lumpy snow. After you are done spreading, sprinkle on that sanding sugar for sparkly flurries of snow and Frosty the Snowman is looking fabulous so far. The Deb and Hold is one of my favorite products that I often show in all my videos to achieve sparkle on cake pops, strawberries, apples, or any treats after the chocolate has dried. So if you'd like to try it out, I have a link in the description box below in my Amazon store. Let's dress up these snowmen with a striped scarf. I cut these Sarabelle candies long enough to stretch across his neck and keep him warm by attaching it with a band of melted chocolate. And once that's secure, place another dot on the edge and fold over his scarf while pressing down. Frosty looks very fashionable. Last, I finished it off with a red heart sugar decoration. Another classic option is to add simple black buttons with these Wilton black bead sprinkles. I dab a dot of the chocolate and arrange buttons directly over it. Cute as a button! For his signature carrot nose, I cut orange fondant into a tiny triangle shape and to decorate his eyes and mouth, I piped on black icing with a tip number 3 to make dots. This is just a royal icing mix combined with water and black gel food coloring. I really love decorating with royal icing without having to constantly heat it up and adjust the consistency, which happens when you pipe with chocolate. There's nothing like gingerbread cookies to go with your hot chocolate, but these aren't any gingerbread. Our friends Mr. and Mrs. Gingerbread whipped up a magical recipe for us because this channel is extra magical. We have the Mickey gingerbread cookies inspired by Disney, and how cute are they? To make the gingerbread dough, first I'm mixing up the dry ingredients, which are three cups of flour, a quarter of a teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of cinnamon, two teaspoons of ginger, lots of spices in here guys, 
a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of baking powder. Then let's whisk that all up and set the dry ingredients aside with Mrs. Gingerbread. In another bowl, I have a half a cup of room temperature butter, as well as a quarter of a cup of shortening, and three quarters a cup of light brown sugar that I'm creaming together until the mixture is light and fluffy. Just like that. Next, we are beating in one whole egg just until combined, and the magic starts to happen when we pour in a half of a cup of molasses, Overall, you're going to love how your entire kitchen is going to smell just like a gingerbread house. Last, to bring the dough together, incorporate a third of the dry ingredients in at a time to prevent overmixing. You may notice this dough is slightly more sticky than other types of cookie dough, but that's completely normal for gingerbread. And we have the most yummy gingerbread dough all ready to roll. I'm forming the dough into a big ball and rolling it out to a quarter of an inch thickness. Since this dough is sticky, parchment paper is your best friend for this. To prevent sticking, lots of times we slap on lots of flour, but it can change the taste and we don't want to dull the flavor of Mr. and Mrs. Gingerbread recipe. Before cutting the shapes, let your rolled dough chill for one hour and I'm taking this super adorable Mickey gingerbread cutter and cutting out as many Mickeys as I can for my dough and peeling away the extra scraps which you can re-roll if needed. Carefully peel Mickey away from the parchment paper without ruining his shape and place on a parchment lined baking sheet so he's all ready for the oven. These cookies can easily overbake and become on the hard side, so pop them into bake for 12 to 14 minutes at 350 degrees for a perfectly soft texture. Cool down, it's decorating time, and Mr. Gingerbread recommends to use royal icing and piping consistency. The Mickey gingerbread design I was inspired by from Disney was outlined first, so I went ahead and outlined with a tip number three, and I stop at the halfway mark, then pick up from there, making sure to go all around the curves and keep a constant pressure on the bag. I don't know about you, but I always look forward to decorating the gingerbread with those squiggly lines called the Rick Wrap, piped on with that same tip number three, and zigzags on top of his ears. To bring Mickey to life, I piped his iconic face with brown royal icing with two ovals for his eyes, paired with a jelly bean shaped nose and a curved smile. Then I added two pink fondant circles for his cheeks and a red fondant bow tie that I cut out with a cookie cutter. I couldn't believe that when I opened this pack of M&Ms there was only three green ones inside so I didn't have enough for all my cookies but Mickey still looks mellow with the yellow. Last but not least are these marshmallow cocoa mugs that are so simple to make and will be a hit at your hot cocoa bar. The striped paper straws were actually Glad brand but they do the trick and look a lot like candy canes and I'm pushing them through the center of the marshmallow. You don't need to dip the straws in melted chocolate like you would do for cake pops since they are sticky enough on their own and right after that Go ahead and dip them into white chocolate melts, then gently shake off the excess and place on parchment paper to dry. 
Extra chocolate always pulls on the bottom, so it's always a good idea to shake, shake, shake it off and take your time. I mentioned for dipping the snowman pops, I thinned down my chocolate, which I did for these as well for a smooth look and the temperature being at 86 degrees. The absolute best candy canes for this are the Dollar Tree ones. They were the most sturdy to cut the hook without breaking and the perfect size. Once I cut them to look like the handle of the mug, I took a brush and added melted chocolate to both ends, pressing it to the side of the mug for about 10 seconds before letting go. I really love how the handles came out and how they add a pretty pop of color to the white mug. To add a wintry feel to the mug, I took this gold shimmer fountain and a small snowflake cutter to make snowflake shapes. We are painting over the snowflake with edible gold paint anyway, so if you only have a plain fountain, feel free to use that. But it's great that you use less coats of the paint, having the fountain gold already underneath. After the snowflakes are stuck onto the mugs with a dot of chocolate, I mix an edible gold paint and one of the most common questions I get from you guys is what works best for this. The Everclear Vodka with an edible gold luster dust gives the most intense look. You only need a few drops of the Everclear to mix it and it always looks so stunning and gorgeous. Everything is better with drips, especially a cocoa mug. I put the milk chocolate melt into a plastic squeeze bottle and let the chocolate drip down a little bit before moving over to do the next one and alternate the leans for a drippy effect. The consistency shouldn't be too clumpy, yet it shouldn't be too runny either. I like the chocolate smooth without being too loose so it doesn't run all the way down the mug. Now I'm going back to fill in the top, working as quickly as possible since it dries fast. You can choose to add the mini marshmallows while the chocolate is wet, but I'm taking my handy dandy dab and hold and sticking them on after it dries so I can take my time. It probably was a better idea to do this step before adding the marshmallows, but better late than never. This is a mini gingerbread man cutter, and unfortunately I had to slice off his bottom half and legs, and drew his eyes with a black edible marker and red edible marker for his smile. I mixed the gold shimmer fondant with brown gel food coloring to create the color of the gingerbread. And he at least needs one button, right? The perfect size are these rainbow bead sprinkles. There's lots of colors in here. You can choose any of them that you like. It would have made more sense to stick the gingerbread in before adding the marshmallows, but they still held on fine with melted chocolate. Oh snap, he's coming out of the cocoa! Oh, not the buttons! I hope you enjoyed these ideas for your DIY hot cocoa bar and it gave you some holiday spirit. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching.